What's going on guys, it's George, aka The Big G, and welcome to my channel. I just want to give a very quick disclaimer. So if you haven't already, uh, if you haven't already seen my introduction video to my hair loss journey, uh, I would strongly suggest you watch that one first. It's going to give you more of an idea um, of who I am when I started losing my hair. Um, and I guess my reasons as well uh, for going through with this procedure. But yeah, without um, without further ado, let's get into the video. Good morning, guys. So it's uh, it's ten to seven here in London. Um, sorry about the uh, the dodgy filming. Um, so yeah, I'm just about ready to leave uh, to go to the train station to go to Stansted to fly, uh, catch a flight to Istanbul, Turkey, baby. As you can see, I'll just quickly show you my my little suitcase and um, my rucksack. Usually I'm a sort of a, a criminal underpacker. Uh, however, there is a reason for the suitcase. Obviously you're only going for two days. Told on the way back, you get given certain uh, certain liquid, shampoos, um, that sort of thing. And obviously I won't be able to get that through in my hand luggage. So that's why we've got a suitcase and it's packed out with loads of stuff that I do not need, um, just so I don't uh, feel like an idiot carrying a suitcase around with nothing in it. So yeah, this is uh, I guess the second last day with uh, with the barnet, with the the weak barnet. It's a little little emotional, you know. This is uh, this is the hair that this is the hair that my mummy and my daddy gave me. But well, here we are, about to go change it. Having said that, I am just uh, I'm just adding hair that's already on the back of my head to my head. So yeah, it's still going to be the the hair that I inherited. Um, but yeah, super stoked. I will, uh, I'll catch you all in, I guess, in the airport. Hey guys, <laughs> I know I said I was, uh, I was only gonna check back in when I got to the airport, but I barely even made it to the first train station and my pits, my pits are starting to come through. Now bearing in mind it's 15 degrees, I'm in London and I'm about to head to Turkey. I'm thinking that maybe gray, maybe gray was the wrong idea. A bad choice, George, a bad choice indeed. I've made it to made it to the airport. Um, unfortunately, I did the most George thing ever and managed to leave. <laughs> I, I managed to leave my uh, my suitcase, my luggage on the train. Far from ideal. However, ironically, I was listening to a podcast um, about stoicism and minimalism, um, and so I'm I'm going to treat it as a sign that. Obviously the universe wanted me to lose my stuff and now I can just go a whole weekend in Istanbul in a, in a hoodie and, uh, and jeans. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was speaking earlier as well about how sweaty I was after like five minutes. So yeah, not ideal, but here we are, we move. Also worth noting that I'm now racing through the airport without a suitcase, absolutely racing. So yeah, every cloud. At this point in the video, I successfully caught my plane and captured these uniquely captivating short videos of the window and beyond. I therefore invite you to sit back, relax, and take solace in this brief moment devoid of my narcissistic tendencies. Namaste. La da dee, la da do, la da dum. La da dee, la da do, la da dum. La da dee, la da do, la da dum dum dum. Da 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 dum. We made it, made it to Istanbul. Istanbul. Um, it's actually a relatively, relatively nice journey. Got some bits done. Wasn't sat next to any any crying babies or really fat people. So yeah, cannot complain. Uh, off to meet the drivers who are gonna take me to my hotel, I think. And then I'm gonna drop my stuff off and get out and see as much of the city as I can in approximately three hours. But yeah, we're here, baby. Owing partially to my lack of YouTube video experience, but mostly to my being ravenous at this point and having only kebabs on my mind, I didn't get much footage of the room. But as you can see, it was delightful and all included in my package deal with Smile Hair Clinic. <clears throat> I therefore raced out the room, jumped in an Uber and made my way over to the local mall. 
where I had not one, but two kebabs. Mm -mm. At the mall, I recorded several videos, cringy, aggressive, and even profane videos that added zero production value. I therefore decided to omit them, and the next time you'll see me, I'll have just woken up the day after, testosterone racing through my loins, and energy levels soaring. Morning guys. So, it's about 10 to seven. Um, usually I'd be up by now, but obviously my body clock, um, my body clock says it's 10 to five. I'm gonna head down for some breakfast at seven and I've gotta be, I've gotta be downstairs at quarter past eight for, uh, for the taxi. Also, really not feeling good because, I, again, because I haven't got my suitcase, so that means I haven't got any tooth toothpaste or a toothbrush. So I'm also going to have to go and try and locate a little supermarket or whatever close by to pick some, some supplies up. With regards to the procedure, like, I am, yeah, I'm excited. I'm nervous. Obviously, I'm not nervous, actually. I'm not nervous at all. Okay, well, I'm going to go and wake myself up. I'm going to take a cold shower, drink some water, and then head down for some, some delicious Turkish breakfast. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm excited, and I'll, I'll show you all when I get there. So long, farewell, I'll feel you just saying goodbye. So long, farewell, I'll feel you just saying goodbye. Saying goodbye to the forehead, guys. Not all of the forehead, obviously. But this top part and the Widder's Peak. Uh, how long have we known each other? Forehead. Um, me and the forehead have known each other for 26 years. But me and the, the five and the, I guess the six and a half head over here and over here. We've known each other for two or three years. Okay, right. Goodbye, forehead. Everyone say goodbye. After one, two, three. Goodbye, forehead. And through to breakfast. It looks like there's quite a lot here. Uh, I'm gonna find myself a seat and I'll show you what's uh, what's on what's on the menu. So we have lots of fruit and veg. There's no fruit actually here. But yeah, there was tomatoes, debate that one if you will. Veg and uh, various cheeses, I believe. Mozzarella, feta, uh, Cecil cheese. I'm guessing that's some sort of Turkish cheese I've never, never had before. I'll be trying that. Um, dill, lots of stuff over here. Equally, you've got some, uh, this is where the, the good stuff is, the cooked stuff. Some scrambled eggs, French fries, Tomato sauce, not sure what I'll be having that with. Uh, eggs. Also loads of stuff over here, some fresh juice. Um, and various cereals, water. There's also a coffee machine. I bloody love a coffee right now, but unfortunately I'm, I'm not allowed one. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna play up and uh, I'll show you what I've got. So this is what I went for in the end. Two kinds of scramble egg. Uh, one with veggies, which I've never had before, but it looks good. Various bits of salami, tomatoes, which also don't look like tomatoes, but I'm gonna believe them. Uh, some cheese, currently not eating dairy, but it's Turkish cheese and I'm in Turkey, so gotta give that a try. And then some muesli and, uh, and some yogurt. And I, I made a friend. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm going to tuck in and I guess the next time we'll see you, I'll be at the clinic. As you can see, the clinic was huge. Ten stories, in fact. It was also wonderfully well equipped, even having a chandelier to make all of us frogs feel like Prince Charming. There were a few things required of us when we entered in the morning. We had to first sort out payment, and I think it's worth noting here that Smile didn't try and upsell anything. I've heard a lot about other clinics doing this, 
and I'm glad to report this didn't happen. We had to watch various videos managing our expectations and trawl through the dreaded terms and conditions. Luckily though, the snacks provided were delicious. So it's about, uh, it's about 20 past nine um, here in the clinic. I've just had my, just had my bloods taken. Got a nervy wait to find out if the procedure can go ahead, if I've got hepatitis A, B or HIV. The, the nurses keep looking down at the, the thing that's doing my, it looks almost like a, uh, a lateral flow test actually. The nurses keep looking at it with a magnifying glass, which makes me a little bit nervous. Um, but I don't know where I would have contracted hepatitis A, B or HIV. I passed all the tests. Very impressed with the, everything so far. So many people knocking about, doing various bits and bobs. No idea what they're doing, um, but it's very reassuring. The doctor then came through to help restructure my whole face by redesigning my new hairline. There was a little bit of back and forth here, but you are given complete autonomy over the final decision. However, I did choose to leave this almost entirely up to the expert in the room. It's important not to go too far down the forehead as transplanted hairs are mostly permanent and so one has to consider how one might look lounging on a cruise with grandma 50 years down the line. It's also worth noting here that my chest is entirely natural. No silicon required. Hello, so I have just had um, just had the first stage done, the extraction stage, extraction, I can't speak properly. I feel a little dizzy um, and I look fucking crazy. I look like, I don't know, a dinner lady. Although I also think I could, I could get away with this look at a, a rave or a festival. I don't know what you guys think, probably disagree. Um, it was okay, it went on for about an hour and a half. I got a, the only, the only painful bit was the first, first 15 to 20 minutes just when they're um, sticking their local anaesthetic in, in and around. Uh, the back of your head um, other than that was fine apart from you so you can't feel anything on the back of your head so they they are i assume they have to push really hard down um, to keep your head like completely still um, and i couldn't feel this in the back of my head but the front of my head i had quite like a just a dull headache for about an hour and a half which wasn't ideal um, and you can hear you can hear the extraction as well every single time it comes up and it's sort of uh, it reminded me of a Chris Lorenzo song from, uh, I think it's called Water, way back when, um, which brought up some, uh, some, bad, some bad memories, some bad nostalgia. Uh. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're good. Gonna tuck into some, some food now. I'm bloody hungry. Uh, and then on to, on to the next stage of the the transformation. Um, the last part of the procedure, well, the second and third part of the procedure, which basically morphed into one, um, went well. The second part was painless, actually maybe even enjoyable. Um, it was so, so weird, like you could feel the, um, the needles going into your head, making the tiny little incisions. You could feel them, but you could, they didn't hurt. Um, it is, it's very surreal having probably one of the weirdest sort of experiences that I had being wide awake for six to seven, I think it was actually maybe even eight hours in the end, being wide awake, sat upright, so you can obviously see the whole room. And you can also see just these like, these hands poking over your brow, uh, or you can just see like shadows and uh, you can literally just see, sometimes you can see a shadow of them picking up a hair and plonking it in your head. So yeah, very surreal to be wide awake. The third part, um, which was the longest part, uh, the woman who um, did the local anaesthetic was like, let me know if anything really hurts. And there was a couple of occasions where it didn't really hurt, just like slightly hurt. And maybe I should have said something, <clears throat> but I felt like uh, I could brave it. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the, the last couple of hours I'd say was painful. And of course, uh, a lot of drugs. Um, uh, as I said, I was awake the whole time, but local anaesthetic was uh, put into my head and the back of my head probably around 30 times, like 30 individual needles. Um, don't correct me on that. And and also at the end, well, about an hour before the end, 
um, the, another doctor who I hadn't seen, who wasn't a hair doctor, walked in with a drip. So that was disconcerting. But I think that just that just is it's, that was meant to be meant to happen that way. And maybe I missed it in the small print. But yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. I'll show you show you what uh, what's been done. So in the end, I had four thousand. 4,600 graphs. I'm not sure how many they actually put into the head, um, but I think they use most of them. So I'm hoping that that covers it, as you can see. Um, yeah, so my washer, you can see my hairline. Um, I've never had a far, for, uh, a far forward hairline anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay, guys, I will catch you tomorrow um, for the wash. Wish me luck uh, with sleeping tonight. <clears throat> morning guys so um it's the morning after the night before um i slept pretty well uh it was very hard to get to sleep initially just because i'm not used to sleeping slightly upright and also i was very anxious about potentially scratching my head um, or whatever might happen but none of that happened and um, my head isn't even remotely itchy uh, i think maybe that'll come when it starts to scab um so yeah, I, set, I slept upright and got some, got some decent sleep. So I thought I'd just run you through the meds that I've got to take. I tried to do this yesterday, but I realized that I had no idea what I was talking about. And I wanted to be a little bit more informative, unless it's just a, a goofball. 9,000 open wounds on my head. Oh, I'm such a warrior. But you know what shampoo's for? It's for cleaning your hair. So yesterday, um, the, the, obviously the night of the operation, had to take two medications. So that was this one, this Augmentin. Get that right, right up and close. So this is an, an antibiotic it's from the, the penicillin group and I've got to take this for the next um, five days. Starting tonight and it's only a, a twice, day, uh, twice day capsule. It is a bloody chunky boy. Um, so it's a tough, tough pill to swallow, quite literally. Um, and the, only, the other one that I had to start taking this, uh, yesterday evening was Voltaron um, film tablets. It's this one here. And this is an anti-inflammatory. Um, so, so you are very post-transplant susceptible to puffing up. Um, yeah, just like cheeks, forehead, nose. From what I've seen of it, it looks hilarious. And from honest with you, there was, a te there was part of me that was tempted not to take this because I really wanted to see... Um, <laughs> what it came to but I think that's a a risk that maybe isn't worth worth <laughs> isn't worth taking and there's still a good chance even with even with these that I may puff up to a, a decent size uh which will still be hilarious and um, I'm sure will create some good content so yeah just these two for night one and both of them I've got to keep taking for five days yeah so the morning after you have to start taking um this Prednol oh dropped it this uh Prednol so this again is an anti-inflammatory, um, which again, I guess highlights how important anti-inflammatories are. Uh, it's also a, cortico uh, a corticoid steroid. So you have to take this three times a day, um, today and tomorrow, then twice a day on the third day, uh, and just once a day on the final day. Um, and again, yeah, just to, I guess, reduce swelling. Um, and the, the steroid, the steroid cream or the steroid within the pill uh, tablet will also help um, with aid in recovery and that sort of thing. Of course, I'm gonna get on finasteride as well. I've already bought some finasteride um, and I'll start taking that after about day seven, day seven to day 15, I think they recommend. Um, not sure why, you don't have to, you can't take it straight away. Uh, but yeah, I will be getting on finasteride and uh, obviously if you have any questions about any of this stuff, probably finasteride would be, would be the one that you have the most questions on. Please do let me know. I can't claim to be an expert, um, but I have got a living, living experience of, well, at least I will have a living experience of these things. Um, and I can explain to you, you know, whether all these rumoured side effects have affected me. Also worth noting that I didn't have, I was told to put obviously those, those diapers over the pillows um, in case there was any bleeding. But as you can see, um, there was absolutely no bleeding in the night. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but usually it's a good thing, I'd say. Shortly after that car crash of a medication report, I was picked up buy a taxi and take in for a wash, specifically a hair wash. They advise that the first wash should be done at the clinic. There is a good tutorial available on Smile's YouTube channel, so if you have to rush home after the procedure for whatever reason, this is available. As you can tell by my facial expressions, this was a little sore, but as you can also probably tell from my facial expressions, 
I took it like a champ. I will cover myself doing this wash at home at a later date in a later video when it hurts a little bit less and when I can show you all the scrubs, shampoos and ointments that are provided by Smile. Obviously, as you can see, it's much cleaner now, much cleaner to look at. Um, I will say that the donor area, so the area behind where they took the, the hairs from, is pretty disgusting. I'll give you a, a little tour behind my head. So as you can see, it's pretty horrible. It is, uh, yeah, not enjoyable to look at. There we go, that's better. But yeah, the actual top of my head, I think looks okay. Um, obviously not how I want it to look and not how it will look anytime in the future. Hello guys, how are you doing? So as you, um, as you can tell by the, uh, by the decor of the room I'm in, probably can't tell, I am back in the UK. So it's the day after, um, the day after I got back, I got back at around 12 o'clock last night, uh, obviously went straight to bed. And then um, woke up this morning at about five o'clock just because of the time difference, but managed to get back to sleep, got back to, um, got up at a normal time in the end. So um, I have washed my hair. So yeah, stay tuned and, and look out for that in the next video. So before I left for Turkey, I think I had in my head, um, I had in my head that I was going to sort of be a hermit crab for the two weeks following the procedure. Um, just because I thought, you know, I was going to be very, I don't know, ashamed or embarrassed about how I looked. Um, but I think this morning or last night at the airport, I didn't, I felt actually, I felt very empowered. I felt um, very good about myself um, and my decision. And it doesn't look that bad at the moment. I know it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, but yeah, I, I made the decision this morning to just basically just live my normal life, of course, without going to the gym and without um, strenuous exercise and staying in the sun for too often. So my friend was getting a tattoo, so I decided to pop along with him um, down to the uh, the parlor or whatever they're called these days. Um, was yeah strolling down a, a busy London street and had um, maybe a few glances, but nothing I was too worried about. And I'll probably wrap things up here. Um, thank you for joining. So one final thing: if you have any questions about anything, anything uh, from the procedure, um, about the clinic. Uh, about my sort of my experience with the aftercare so far um, yeah please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section um, or drop me a message on Instagram I will leave my my Instagram below and also yeah if you are if you are looking to go to smile uh, I'm also going to pop a link below um, for for the clinic as I said I cannot I cannot recommend them enough I've had a great great experience great couple of days um, getting to know all the lovely people there um, and also um, I'm very happy with how Currently, the uh, the lid is looking. Obviously, we've got a long way to go, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm very hopeful that I'm gonna be very hopeful that I'm gonna be able to be looking back to my dazzling best um, in not too long. So, if you've enjoyed this video, please do please do drop a like, a comment, um, and also hit that subscribe button as well. Because as I say, I'm gonna be um, bringing you updates for. Um, probably after after two weeks, because um, I think one week might be a bit too soon, uh, and then month, and then probably every uh, every month after that.